everyone to the Rest Podcast, where our goal is to help each and every one of you displace confusion, chaos, and dis-ease in order to heal and find significance in life. I am your host, Natalie Williams, and I am here with the author of The Reconstitution Method for Healing and Rest, Virginia Dixon. Hi, Natalie. Hi, Virginia. (laughs) I am so excited for this (laughs) conversation today because having Nick here, I mean, this was a divine appointment for the two of you to me. And of course, we know that nothing happens by accident or is coincidence. So this is incredible. And for those of you who haven't heard of Nick or Nichos and his art, he did an Olympic mural. He's extremely gifted. And it's just an honor to have you here today, Nick. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Captivating. Yes. Nick's art is captivating, as are you, Nick. We met under a bridge. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, we did. In LA, that's right. Nick shares some studio space with my daughter in the art district in downtown Los Angeles. And and she says, oh, mom, this is his art. And I rummaged through your pieces in the studio. I had to. It was so compelling, Nick. And I said, I have to meet him let's take him lunch let's take him she says well let me call him or you called her however it was i thought we got to stop everything (laughs) and go meet this boy (laughs) and nick honestly you are a beautiful soul and i wanted our listening audience to hear your voice Mm -hmm. and to know your story so welcome thank you so much for inviting me (laughs) First thing I said, how in the world your art made me feel a lot of things, Mm -hmm. a huge spectrum of things. I marveled at what you can do with a spray can. I've never seen anything like it in my life, evidenced by the following that you have and the jobs you've been commissioned to do. I saw light, I saw darkness, and given my background... And your appreciation and integration of anatomy in the messages you project through your art. And so I met you under the underpass. Yeah, and the uh, underpass in Fourth Bridge, Los Angeles. Downtown. Fourth Bridge, yeah. Okay, yeah. give everybody the intersection in case they're near and you <laughs> need uh, to go by. Well, this is Santa Fe and Mateo, where Mateo like, runs into Santa Fe, and then there's the bridge right there. Unbelievable. Yeah. Tell us what, tell everybody what you're painting. And, and this one is like, what, what was it? Five, five different stories in the end, which connect to one. And I've been doing this uh, quite a bunch lately because, you know, I used to, I used to just paint dissected animals or humans or whatever. It's just showing the anatomy and uh, maybe sometimes ripping them apart or like dissecting or cross-secting. The, yeah, with the focus on anatomy, and, but with this now, it's it's it has changed because I'm, and uh, there's more about the storytelling. It's it's like it's for me. It's so much more important to tell a story where people can connect to. People can connect to anatomy, of course, but you know, it's it's interesting because there were always just two types of people. Like in, in like when I paint, and then people come and experience the wall firsthand. And, you know, it's really funny to see how people react, especially when it's, you know, this this body of some creature completely ripped apart. And, you know, I show the anatomy and I show how the body works, you know. Why? It's been with me forever. That interest was there always. Mm -hmm. So you, as as far back as you can remember, you were particular you're interested in the peculiarities, the particulars of what makes up a human being. Yeah, from the or inside out. life itself, like mm-hmm. how how this was in the end able to manifest in this reality, if yeah. you want to say so. So curi- curiosity, perfect machine. Yeah, <laughs> curiosity. Yes, mm-hmm. it's funny you call it a machine because your art is like a living organism. It I don't see I don't see the mechanics of it as much as I see the complexities, the conflicts, the. The light, the dark, the evil, the good, those things reflect. It doesn't feel like a machine to me. No, not in that sense. You know, it's, uh, it's, um, 
it's we are made out of a nervous system and uh, an organism which is everything is interacting perfectly uh, how was that thing like able to develop mm -hmm. over the you know millennia <laughs> if you want to say so or How well, God even, says, you know, I wove you together intricately in your mother's womb. There's this yeah. intricacy of design that yeah. I always say it speaks of a creator. Yeah. It speaks of an intelligence, right? Yeah, which again, you know, at that point, I don't think it makes, you know, some call it a machine because it's created by by us humans. Hmm. We are created by some higher force, clearly. Right. Uh, clearly, right? Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I look at your work and I see the fingerprint of God And I see the conflict of good and evil mm -hmm. that we wrestle with, of light and dark, of good and bad. And I see it manifested in your work, which is complicated. I want you to tell everybody a little bit about your story. Because even as we speak, people are going to go and check you out. Mm -hmm. It's like when we launch this podcast, your people are going to say, oh, what is, who's he, what's he talking about with this person? <laughs> They're going to go yeah. check me out. They're going to want to check you out. And so I want them to hear your story yeah you know just going back real quick to to the anatomy just to you know set some stage in this case for me personally it was not always like coming from only curiosity oh okay it's 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 been there as a as as some sort of force which has been speaking to me mm -hmm. but not necessarily from a place of light and love mm. no it's been speaking to you from a darker place yes interesting yeah. and when were you aware of that always it's reflected in your art mm -hmm. yeah. your art's controversial obviously but it's reflected in your art and i'm looking into your beautiful face right now <laughs> and i'm reminded of the scripture the eyes are a window of the soul and the day i met you i thought wow The story, the plot thickens because I look at this tender, gentle, kind, loving, beautiful soul and this art. I like what you just said. It wasn't just curiosity. It was almost this darkness that drove me to dig deeper into maybe the anatomy and the physiology and the complexity of what it is to be human mm -hmm. or what it is to be alive. So I want people to hear your story. I'm born in Austria, um, south of Austria towards Italy, um, maybe two, two and a half, two hours away from Vienna. So Vienna is kind of in the north of the country. So two hours is actually pretty sovereign in a, in a tiny country. Right. You know, uh, so it's a country of eight million people. What is that? Half of Los Angeles. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a very different perception of reality there, but a lot of history. Mm. So much history. Yeah, and it's in the center of Europe, pretty much. It's uh, historically a place where everything keeps somehow colliding in this place. Yes, it does. Yeah. People carry a lot of stuff from there, you know. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, you know, uh, I, I grew up in maybe 10 miles from the iron curtain back then it was when i was born it was still mm -hmm. active so you know um beautiful country looks like i always um, like compare it to the shire from lord of the rings yes. i love that <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful it's, it's just it's just meadows and hills and forests and it's peaceful but it's it's also you can you can still feel the heat in the ground mm -hmm. if you are sensitive to energies in general so we always say that our stories don't begin at home but in the home of the home of our parents 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 and yes. you're really speaking to that and how you felt it you had this knowledge that you were able to access as a child that's amazing yeah in in, in very interesting ways you know my, my family you know like what is very like rooted in in austrian society is hunting mm. you know you're a hunter you are someone watching my grandfather and my my, my dad like dissecting animals f for actually a good cause of feeding the family or exactly. everyone around and with a lot of respect also yeah and uh, i've been going with them at night already since I was three years old, you know, they took me to the woods and the excitement of that 
And I think what you just brought up is really important. There's a reverence for life. Oh, yeah. And the process. Oh, yeah. It wasn't to kill for the joy of killing in the hunt. It wasn't the chase. It was the provision. It was to sustain life. Yes, yes. And it's, uh, that is something which has been communicated to me from the beginning. It's not, it's not about the killing. You know, as soon as this deer was shot, there was always like paying respect. Yeah. Like, a ritual, a, a, almost, a ritual, yeah. a prayer. And then a, lo- a lot of really interesting things happened to me back then as a kid. Watching that constantly, like watching my dad slicing it up, you know, me understanding, oh, this is why we look inside. And, you know, I wasn't even questioning if we you humans look any different to this animal inside. Mm-hmm. It was for me, it was like, whoa. Okay, this is how we look inside. inside. You know, exactly. This is, this is how we function. Mm-hmm. As I said before, it's this this perfect mm-hmm. mechanism, functionality of a liver or the digestive system or the lungs or whatever. That that came almost in like naturally because my dad explained it to me. You know? So your view of anatomy and of the inner workings of living things was nurtured at a young age. Yeah. Well, let, let's, let's, like, from my perspective now, I would say the knowledge was triggered mm-hmm. to remember. That's right. <laughs> from, yeah. a, from a deeper remembrance. Yes. I think that's something that I found captivating in your work. It was very, very deep and very generational. And there was something profound by way of narrative. What were the practical aspects of living in Austria? Going over borders was like you going on another planet. As soon as we like drove to the Hungarian border, you know, you you were seeing more horses and old Russian cars more than like you you literally you did a time jump. Wow! And it's still like that on a certain level. Interesting. So um, I just went to um, Czech Republic and just drove from Vienna one and a half hour north to see some really outstanding artwork um, because somehow those paintings were really close on this point in some castle in a little village where you were like, damn, we are like in the early 90s. Wow. You know? <laughs> this is literally <laughs> looked like that. <laughs> it's, wow. it's, um, and, you know, the early 90s in America is different than the early 90s in the middle of Europe. It's more like the 70s. Even the 70s were more evolved than... In America, and then so it's like time stops. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. How did that impact your formative years in terms of how you viewed your mom, your dad, family, community? Well, my, my parents were really lucky because I was a kid. I, I was, I was always inside. So I was introspective. Always, yes, I was always looking inside in the sense of I made my own stories up to to like, you know, like different realities. I played with my toys for hours. My mom was like, he's not, he's not really talking. He doesn't really talk. Yeah, I didn't, apparently I didn't start talking until I was three years old, really, because, you know, I was shy. Now from this perspective, now when I remember back, I think I didn't want to really deal with this reality. I was literally mm. questioning, what the, what the hell am I doing here? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know? <laughs> Is the reality you didn't want to deal with, was it the consequence of political things or just... The compounding effect of generational no, things and political things. The political part wasn't really felt in the countryside. I think it's more. It was more like survival mode. Clearly, yeah. so it's interesting. <laughs> these observations really began to shape your worldview. Well, yeah. You talk a lot about depression in your book. Yeah, and depression <laughs> was a very big part of your life. Do you attribute the the few things you just mentioned from? the region you lived in, the political realities, the attachment things, living with two, three generations right there in the same home. Do you attribute that to some of the depression? Or when did you really realize, I don't want to be here. It likes- <laughs> no, I did, I did realize that. Um, so depression is something, I cannot really say that I was a depressed kid ever. Mm-hmm. Like, but... I knew from the beginning, since I was a little kid, that I am here and I felt like I was kind of trapped. I wasn't free. Mm. And it's like I understood from very early on that I'm here to set myself free. And I, I was born into, Amazing. Into, this, into this situation to set myself free, to understand, 
to experience all this again, let's say, to understand this this might be the time I can I can actually rise above all this. But I didn't really know how for the longest time. I'm so glad you said that, Nick, because I've been beating this drum for ever for 40 years. <laughs> and I've said the deepest longing of the soul of a human being is to be free. Mm-hmm. And the reason I began to explore themes in theology is because I'd read, read the Federalist Papers. And I realized those men understood something about freedom that were not congruent with what my history book was teaching me. Mm-hmm. And since you're big on history and that region of the world, and by the way, our ancestors are both from that region of the world. <laughs> But we see where these deep convictions and this knowledge of something that you almost don't have words for, you found artistic expression for some of these conflicts that you that you experienced, that you saw. I found reasoning, literary, theological mm-hmm. expression for similar things. And when I looked into your eyes, I thought, this is my brother. <laughs> Maybe. But I'm, my, this is my brother from... Another mother, because we have the same creator dad. I believe we have a creator that made us. But I was so captivated by what you just said, because the message of freedom and the desire and the longing for freedom is how this republic was established, right? It's what established America Mm -hmm. is a pursuit of freedom. But there's no freedom without liberty, which is a function of the soul. Mm -hmm. The conscience, the mind, the heart, the will, the conscience. Mm -hmm. So we talk about that quite a bit. But what's gripping, before you walked in the door today to do this interview, I thought, I love this guy. And I'm so conflicted by his work. And I can't wait to have this conversation with him. And I read your paper on life is energy. And I don't want to jump to that too quick today. (laughs) But the reason that was so compelling to me is because the greatest leader, the greatest philosopher, the greatest teacher, the most prolific human being that more books have been written about and wars have been fought over is the lives and teaching of this person who said, oh no, I am that creator. I am the son of God. And what was interesting is he said, I am the word. I am the light. I am the life. And in all your writing and in all your art, I saw that you have a profound understanding of words, of light, of life. And to hear you say the quest was for freedom, I just think it's interesting how these conversations manifest in these different narratives. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I work with some of the most complex, dark, unspeakable situations that 99% of the time I'll never repeat or talk about. But at the end of the day, The miracles we see, Natalie, is because I've helped people step into freedom, Mm -hmm. understanding the relationship between the spirit, the soul, and the body. And your art reflects that. So it's so thrilling for me to say, even when I was young, I knew I was here to be free. And I love that. Yes, you were, because you were designed for that freedom and to live in that freedom. You can only understand that when you see. That's right where you're trapped or where the the dark bits are. Yeah. You know? Yes. And that's the beautiful side of suffering, that you see these dimensions of reality that otherwise you don't understand. Yeah. For for me, it was always like, okay, all I can do is work my way out of it. I'm immediately connected to other realities. Imagination. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, It's a beautiful thing. thing. Some stories I came up with was, there were a lot of like, Hero stories, clearly, you know, you're like a of little boy who goes out and plays war to liberate. That's right. You know, <laughs> and, and, um, it's the human drama yeah, to be yeah. liberated yeah. from darkness. Mm-hmm. And then a lot of it was, was very enjoying that process of that darkness to actually, at that point, even to mean something. Because not, 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 I wasn't even able to understand. You needed what to means. give meaning to the darkness that you were trying to defeat to gain your, fr- your yes, freedom. Yes, but that is something I didn't even understand. Of um, course like, not. Like, I mean, like aspects of that are very clearly like, visible with my dad and with my mom. And I'm like, 
I'm connected to my dad, and my dad is connected to my my and my grandfather clearly because he's the firstborn. I'm the firstborn, so I, wow. I, I I connect to the trauma of my grandfather from the, the Second World War. One hundred, one hundred percent, and we plot, we document, yeah. we have bioenergetic, yeah. scientific tools to help people understand and unwrap that. Yeah. So you figured out it was your grandfather, your dad, and you I, I all could, in alignment. I could, I could definitely see the dark bits from there, and I was con- connecting to that more than whatever was going on my mom, on my mom's side. Like I was not connecting to those people in the good or in the dark. It was just like, whatever is going on over there is maybe my brother's job, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> so he's the younger one. He has to deal with my mom's stuff. Like, n- you know, it's not that black and white, but a lot of it no, is in that way. No, but somehow in this section, and I want to record another little segment, if you don't mind, Natalie. Sure. But in this segment, you gave me personally so much context for the conflict that I feel mm-hmm. and the myriad of emotions mm-hmm. and thoughts that cross my mind when I look at your art, because there's a measure of controversy to it. And I'm so thankful that you just explained all that. I want to invite people to go to your website. And in the context of this explanation, they're going to look at your art differently i hope so <laughs> that would be great <laughs> it's, yeah because it's it is i mean this is only one aspect of me understanding what's what's going on you know i always felt like i'm the alien that i'm kind of like the, the the weird and the crazy guy here <laughs> and, and, but maybe maybe it's maybe it's the other way around <laughs> exactly <laughs> and you had complex levels of awareness that you didn't have language for yeah. you didn't have expression for well, I had and, the I had the expression for it. I just didn't understand. It's like, uh, and also that one had to de- be developed more. It was like I've been speaking or painting or drawing a language I didn't understand because yes. I clearly could not express it. Mm-hmm. And the sensitivity you had to the darkness with it is what's reflected in some of your art. Oh, constantly, um, and it's, it's amazing. It's it's uh, and it's been talking to me since you know since I was a little kid, even before school. I like one of the things which has uh, come back to me just as an example now. Like the, let's say in the time where I was like maybe three years old, I have one specific memory that I have. I had visions like very quick, like just closing my eyes and like just having a vision of like jaws, like literally like ripping this body apart and the noise of like just mm-hmm. like breaking bones and organs rip, mm-hmm. being ripped apart and by wolves mm-hmm. let's say let's like jaws of wolves going like mm-hmm. you know it's just mm-hmm. and, I, and i'm like always like oh what the hell where the hell does that come from you know it's like, and i'm like is it, is it is it just me being a little you know no <laughs> but that was that was my perception of it was like okay there's some wild stuff going on inside of me and uh, i've been connecting and it's been speaking to me more and more and, and like on down the road you know and but that was one of the very first ones uh, like um it's 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 been some message let's say if you want to say so that's what i already experienced or uh, had the feeling back then that there is some Something, some piece of immense brutality, just immense brutality. Yeah, like just in super, like just you know something. If, right, just ripped just super, apart. Yeah, it was evil. It yeah. was an evil. Do you know what's yeah. interesting about what you're saying? I wish I could help people understand that a lot of the trauma that they're carrying is the unresolved narratives of generations that come before them. And it's such a gift and a burden and a burden to have this measure of sensitivity at such a young age because you're experiencing the reality that's in this information that is carried on. Mm-hmm. In the Bible, it says, right, the sins of the forefathers, the conflicts, the unresolved conflicts mm-hmm. are passed on from generation to generation, even mm-hmm. to the third and fourth generation. And you not only speak to it so clearly, but you illustrate it so mm-hmm. powerfully. And in the context of healing, 
I think there's a lot to be understood about the creative process and how our bodies and these narratives that we don't understand, how they inform us. Mm. A lot of people struggle with addictions for similar reasons, mm. and they think it's just something that they have to overcome, but there's so many other complexities woven into the tapestry of the stories of ancestors and mm. things you're discussing. Mm. I mean, you're talking about the violence of it, right? Mm. And the drama of the human condition as illustrated in anatomy. Mm. But I have the same conversation when it comes to perpetual business failures or addictions mm. or chronic illnesses, mm. cancer, by the way. Mm -hmm. These unresolved conflicts, how they manifest mm -hmm. in disease states in our children. And it's fascinating to hear you discuss it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm, totally. Yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> and your art gives me a platform to say, okay, here's an artist's rendition of the drama that we talk about, Natalie, mm -hmm. or the trauma that I help people say, I, I, I tell people, no, once you bring these narratives into alignment, you, you create a vehicle through mm -hmm. which the, the spirit, the soul and the body can flesh them out. Mm -hmm. You don't have to own them, but you got to have the courage to face them. Exactly. You need to, but then facing uh, them also means to a certain degree, embracing them too that's right mm -hmm. so let's say you know on this point i'm 16 understanding or like even like 14 15 understanding that i cannot connect to anyone here on a, on, a, on, a, on a level where i can feel understood i can like what i understand from friendship and loyalty is not anywhere close mm -hmm. in in this you know mm -hmm. in this world i like that you've experienced. I've experienced on this point. And all I did was escaping into my own world. And I also had a time where I was playing a lot of computer games just to not deal with reality. Mm -hmm. And like, I only knew this is not what I want to live. Right. You, you hungered for the intimacy in every facet of life. Yeah. Not just in relationships, but with the creative order of things, with humanity, with your own anatomy. I sensed that about you day one. You had this hunger oh, yeah. for meaning and purpose. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. It's all over you, Nick. Yeah, th that for sure. I mean, uh, I mean uh, I'm a Sagittarius. <laughs> you yeah. know? This is what, that's what we do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we go out there and uh, we want, uh, I, I, can, I can live a, like a life in a tiny mm -hmm. town. You know, totally. That's well, you know, happening. it's interesting when you say <laughs> zodiac signs, I don't live by them because of my worldview, but it's amazing and fascinating how absolutely they speak to the creative order of things. Because oh, yeah, I'm a cancer, sure. and every cancer I meet, I can spot him out in a, I can spot him in a room. There's just something so much grander and more and bigger than that. And I want to pick this up in our next little yeah. segment because I want people to hear what happened after those formative years to your life. Yeah. Let's just say art school just gave me like a slight perspective, a door where I'm like, ooh, this is way maybe where I can see the gates to freedom. Okay. We'll leave on that note. That's yes. amazing. What yeah. a cliffhanger. <laughs> we'll pick up in the next episode. Thank you so much. All right, everyone, if you want to get in touch with Nychos or learn more about his art, please go to Nychos.com. That's N-Y-C-H-O-S dot com. You can also find him on Instagram at Nychos. We have so many people that want to gift healing to their friends and family members. Due to popular request, we've officially created the Gift of Rest package for purchase. As a thank you to Nychos and a gift to his followers, we created the coupon code Nychos in all uppercase to gift 25% towards the Gift of Rest. For updates about rest and this podcast, please visit our Instagram or Facebook, The Place of Rest. If you would like more information about Virginia or to support and join the cause of rest, please go to virginiadixon.com forward slash collaborate or call 949-289-5935. Thank you for listening to Rest with Virginia Dixon. We'll see you next week. <laughs>